But let's begin with the last of our leader interviews. It is with Nicola Sturgeon, First Minister of Scotland and leader, of course, of the Scottish National Party. The SNP holds 56 out of the 59 Scottish seats at Westminster. And Nicola Sturgeon has promised, of course, another referendum on independence after the details of the Brexit deal are known. When I talked to her earlier today, like all of us, she was very concerned by the events in London on Saturday night. Well, obviously, like everybody else, I was horrified at the events that unfolded in London uh, on Saturday night. I mean, you know, it is just everybody's worst nightmare. And my thoughts are with all those uh, who lost loved ones and those who sustained injuries. Uh, you know, coming so soon on the back of the Manchester attack, I think it just uh, compounded that sense of horror and shock. Um, but, you know, the concert last night in Manchester, I think, demonstrated very, very powerfully that the terrorists won't prevail because love uh, overcomes hate. And that sounds like a cliche, is in many respects a cliche, but I do think it sums up the spirit that many people uh, have at the moment. We have, though, to get back to the politics. That's the business of this week. Of so course. what about um, the Prime Minister, Theresa May, saying enough is enough? What about Jeremy Corbyn uh, alleging that perhaps it's impossible? I think the quote is, you cannot protect the public on the cheap. He's talked about cuts and um, the way, in fact, that that might have made us, London, more vulnerable than it might have been in the past. Yeah. Where do you stand on all this? Well, I think it's really important that in the few days up to the general election, we're able to have this debate robustly. I mean, there is a part of all of us that doesn't want to get into the cut and thrust of politics when people have died and you know relatives are grieving, people are lying injured in hospital. But when I heard Theresa May say enough is enough yesterday, I felt two things. Firstly, I agreed with her that that is the sentiment we all feel and, and share. But secondly, I don't think anybody can escape the thought that Theresa May has been Home Secretary for the past number of years. And many of the things she was saying, I guess, raised questions about the actions she took as Home Secretary. We can't keep the public safe uh, by cutting police numbers. In Scotland, we haven't cut police numbers. We've maintained the number of police officers. We've also taken steps in the last few months to increase the number of trained armed officers. Now, you know, there will always be occasions where, even with you know many police on the streets, there are it going to be occasions where terrorists manage to commit these kind of acts, but well, we quite. must have uh, we really know tough conversations about this. But mercifully, Scotland has not been the victim of, of, of any sort of terrorist attack since Glasgow Airport back in in two thousand and seven. But do you know of attacks that have been thwarted? Well, our intelligence and security services work with Police Scotland uh, to make sure that people are under surveillance when that is uh, required and that you know action is taken to keep us safe. Scotland is not immune from this threat. There's no intelligence of any specific threat right now, but that shouldn't make any of us complacent. And we work very hard with the police. Uh, the police here in Scotland work very hard with colleagues elsewhere in the UK. The Scottish government works with the UK government. I you know, readily accept that with the best arrangements in the world, there will be occasions where the terrorists manage to commit these atrocities. But we must, I think, have a robust discussion about policing, about security, about relationships with countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, countries that are thought to be funding jihadist groups. You know, there's a, a report that uh, the UK government seems to be refusing to well, publish. Well, I'm, I'm interested that. in that. You, you've tweeted about that, in fact, today, saying the PM has got to give a clear commitment to publish this report. Uh, for the benefit of our listeners who might know, not might not know a great deal about it, which I suspect is most of, of mm. us, um, tell me, what is it and why do you well, believe it's being that, suppressed? Uh, well, this is a report that David Cameron uh, agreed to carry out, looking at uh, the funding streams to uh, jihadist groups, looking at what countries uh, may be providing funding and support to these groups. Now, I've, I've not seen the report. I don't know what's in it, but there is a suspicion that it will show that countries like Saudi Arabia, which, of course, you know, the UK sells arms to and has uh, relationships with, may be uh, shown to be a significant funder of these kinds of groups. And, now, of course, saying... th thousands of British jobs are dependent on that relationship. There's no getting away from that. Well, that may be true, but I also think we have to have, you know, very clear uh, sort of views based on principle around this. Theresa May said yesterday, and you know, I, in the interest of consensus here, I agree that uh, we must have robust conversations, sometimes very difficult conversations around this, but you cannot simply say enough is enough as some kind of rhetorical device without being prepared to have open discussions. So what would you do? 
Well, I think the first step is to publish a report like this and let's have an honest debate uh, on that. I do think we should be asking some very serious questions about arms sales to countries like Saudi Arabia. And, you know, that's the point I'm making. There are so many issues that have to be confronted as part of this and we can't pick and choose. Some of them will be difficult. Some of them will be extremely difficult. But if we're serious about doing everything possible to stem this kind of threat, then that's the kind of approach we've got to take.